In this video, let's know about hydrocele. Hydrocele is an abnormal collection of serous fluid between the visceral and the parietal layers of the tunica vaginalis. So in the scrotum, there is a layer called tunica vaginalis. And here, there is an abnormal collection of the serous fluid of both layers of the tunica vaginalis. This is the developmental anatomy of the testicular descent. So this is during 5 months and the testis remains above the rectum and 6 months, 7 months, 8 months and then the testis descends shortly after the birth into the scrotum. And here will be the tunica vaginalis. Let's talk about the descent of testis in another video. Knowing about the layers of the scrotum is very important in cases of hydrocele and also hernia. Layers of the scrotum from outside to inside, skin, dartos muscle, external spermatic fascia, cremastic muscle or the internal oblique, internal spermatic fascia and the tunica vaginalis. So in this diagram, skin, the dartos muscle, the external spermatic fascia, the cremastic muscle, the internal spermatic fascia or the fascia transversalis and the sixth layer is tunica vaginalis. So these are the six layers of the scrotum. In this layer of tunica vaginalis, there is a visceral layer and also a parietal layer and inside there is a cavity. The accumulation of the serous fluid in between these two layers that is the visceral and the parietal layer of the tunica vaginalis is nothing but the hydrocele. The blood supply of the testis, testicular artery and the testicular veins. The testicular artery is a branch of the abdominal iota. It descends from the posterior abdominal wall and it transverses into the inguinal canal and it supplies the testis and also the epididymis. While coming to the venous drainage, there are extensive venous plexuses called as the papiniform plexus. They live from the posterior border of the testis and as the plexus ascends from posterior to the upward direction, it reduces in size and about the level of the deep inguinal ring, a single testicular vein is formed and it drains into the left renal vein on the left side and then into the inferior vena cava on the right side. So the left side venous drainage is into the left renal vein and the right side is into the IVC. Coming to the risk factors of the hydroceles, most hydroceles are present during the birth, that is congenital hydroceles, and babies who are born prematurely have a higher risk of developing an hydrocele. Hydrocele is most common in men around age 40 or older. It is mainly caused due to scrotal injury, that is trauma to the scrotal region, or iatrogenic cause. Iatrogenic means treatment induced. It can also be caused due to infections, especially STIs, or due to tumors or the radiation therapy. Etiology For baby boys in the developmental stage in the womb, normally the testicles descend from the baby's abdominal cavity into the scrotum. Around the each testicle, there is a sac that is called as processus vaginalis, and it accompanies each testicle, which allows the fluid to surround the testicles. And in most cases, each sac closes and the fluid is absorbed. However, if this fluid remains and the sac closes, this condition is known as non-communicating hydrocele. So non-communicating means the sac is closed and there is a remnant of fluid around the testicle. Usually, this fluid gets absorbed within a year and in some cases, the sac remains open. And this condition is known as communicating hydrocele. Due to the remnant communication, the sac can change in size or the scrotal sac can be compressed. And this fluid can flow back into the abdomen and also again into the scrotum. In older males, that is above the age of 40 years, the hydrocele can develop as a result of inflammation or an injury within the scrotum. Inflammation may be a result of infection of the epididymis or the testicle. We just learnt about communicating and non-communicating and the future and the main classification is of congenital and acquired and the types of hydrocele are congenital and acquired. In congenital, we have vaginal hydrocele, infantile hydrocele, congenital hydrocele or the hydrocele of the cord and in acquired, we further divide into primary, 
and secondary. The primary hydrocele's are most common in the middle age or in later lives, and the secondary is also similar. It is most common in middle age and also in later life. Coming to the primary hydrocele, it is bigger in size, and the secondary is smaller. The primary hydrocele is caused due to defective absorption of the fluid, and the secondary is due to excessive production of the fluid. In primary hydrocele. The palpation of the testis is difficult, whereas in secondary hydrocele, the testis can be easily palpable because this hydrocele is smaller in size. The primary hydrocele cyst is tense, whereas in secondary it is loose. And in primary acquired hydrocele, the trans illumination test is positive, whereas in secondary acquired hydrocele, the trans illumination test may be negative. We will be learning about the trans illumination test in a while. So these are the types of hydrocele congenital that means which is present at birth whereas acquired that occurs in the later life coming to the congenital hydrocele it is of two types non communicating and communicating non communicating means there is a patent process vaginalis for this we should learn about the process vaginalis tunica vaginalis is the covering sac whereas the processus vaginalis is the opening here So in non communicating type of hydrocele there is a patent process vaginalis but the fluid remains here here there will be no communication to the abdominal cavity and also into the scrotal sac whereas in the communicating type of hydrocele the sac remains open and it communicates with the abdominal cavity that is the peritoneal cavity so let's talk about the congenital hydrocele in this the process vaginalis communicates with the peritoneal cavity This is the congenital hydrocele. Here we see this is the communication. This is the abdominal or the peritoneal cavity and here is the testis. The infantile hydrocele. In this tunica and the process vaginalis distend up to the internal ring but sac has no connection with the peritoneal cavity. So here will be the internal ring of the inguinal ligament. and this is the tunica vaginalis the process vaginalis is nothing but the tube or the way which passes around the testis into the peritoneal cavity and in infantile hydrocele the tunica and the process vaginalis distend up to the internal ring but this sac has no connection with the peritoneal cavity so this is the infantile hydrocele the encysted hydrocele of the cord the part of the funicular process is patent and it is closed from the tunica vaginalis below and the peritoneal cavity above so it gives a smooth oval shape of swelling which is associated with the spermatic cord and here the traction test of the testis is positive this is an another type which is called as hydrocele and bisac in this two intercommunicating sacs from above and also below to the neck of scrotum are seen so here will be the neck of scrotum and you will notice one sac from above and one sac from below so this is called as hydrocele and bisac hydrocele of canal of neck this occurs in females in the inguinal canal and the cyst lies in relation to the round ligament of the ovary this is similar to the hydrocele which occurs in men which is the hydrocele of the cord the hydrocele of the hernial sac in this the neck of the hernial sac becomes closed by the adhesions or plugged by omentum which further results in the retention of the fluid which is secreted by the peritoneum of the hernial sac so these are the pictures of primary hydrocele here they are performing the trans illumination test in our medical terminology for the classification in most of the cases the secondary implies to infections injuries or the tumors so here in secondary hydrocele it is mainly caused due to infections like filariasis tb of the epididymis or the syphilis and injuries like the post herniorrhaphy hydrocele that is after the hernia surgery the post varicoclectomy hydrocele and the trauma and in tumors the hydrocele is mainly seen after the malignancy as we just discussed the filarial hydrocele this is mainly common in coastal regions or the tropical regions and it accounts for 80% of the hydrocele in tropical regions and it is caused by the filarial worm that is the ukraria bancrofti and the fluid accumulation is due to repeated attacks of the filarial epididymitis it is larger in size with thickened sac as you can see in the picture 
and it occasionally contains cholesterol rich fluid which is called as chylocele this chylocele is seen due to the ruptured lymph pharynx with the discharge of the chyle into the hydrocele this chylocele resembles the primary hydrocele and it may be associated with filarial elephantiasis coming to the complications of the hydrocele untreated hydrocele can cause infections pyocele that is the pus inside the scrotal cavity hematocele that means blood inside the scrotal cavity or a clotted hematocele untreated cases can also cause calcification of the sac atrophy of the testis inside herniation of the hydrocele sac rupture of the sac or infertility coming to the signs and symptoms in early stages the hydrocele are usually asymptomatic as they enlarge they bulge out and can be a cosmetic problem the symptoms can develop as swelling increases these include heaviness fullness dragging sensations due to the enlarged scrotum there may be a mild discomfort that radiates along the inguinal area to the mid portion of the back if pain developed in a hydrocele it is usually an indication of an acute infection of the epididymis or due to overstretched scrotal skin in huge hydrocelles the size of the hydrocele may decrease with recumbency or it increases in the upright position in cases of fever chills nausea or vomiting they can indicate an infection of an hydrocele coming to the assessment or the physical examination there will be a smooth cystic mass which completely surrounds the testis not involving the spermatic cord inside so remember getting about the swelling is present in hydrocele this is not possible in hernia we will learn about this in upcoming videos this is the main point to remember in the physical examination the consistency of a hydrocele varies with position sometimes a hydrocele can be small and soft while lying down and it may become larger in prolonged standing and when the fluid in the hydrocele is clear that means in primary hydrocele the transillumination test is positive the transillumination test may be negative in filarial hydrocele due to the presence of the chyle or due to complications like calcification or in complicated like hematocele or pyocele how do you know that it is an hydrocele in this the getting about the swelling is positive transillumination test is positive the fluctuation test is positive and it is a non reducible swelling and there is negative cough impulse it is only positive in congenital hydrocele and the test is cannot be palpated separately an exception is the funicular hydrocele or the encysted one coming to the diagnosis uncomplicated hydrocelles do not require radiographic studies while in cases of tumor or torsion ultrasounds can help composition of hydrocele fluid it is a straw color or amber color fluid which contains mainly water or fibrinogen inorganic salts albumin and cholesterol crystals hydrocele fluid normally won't clot if it is drained into a container but will clot immediately if it comes into contact with a drop of blood so this is a point to remember coming to the differential diagnosis hydrocele should be differentiated from testicular tumors epididymal cyst spermatocele epididymoarchitis and testicular carcinoma coming to the treatment in children that is the congenital hydrocele a non communicating hydrocele usually resolves spontaneously and if the hydrocele persists longer than 12 to 18 months it is usually a communicating hydrocele and so it requires inguinal herniotomy in adults the treatment depends upon the age and the degree of discomfort caused by the hydrocele surgical excision is the definitive therapy small and asymptomatic hydrocele do not require treatment they only require reassurance and the main indications for the surgery is scrotal discomfort or pain in the cosmetic regions The surgical techniques include Lord's plication this is used for small to medium size of hydrocelles the benefits of Lord's plication is to reduce risk of hematoma the jabulase operation this is used for large size of hydrocele in this after incision and drainage the sac is everted and sutured behind the testis in this jabulase operation there is increased risk of hematoma formation the sharma and javer's technique after evacuation of the sac 
the testis is placed in a newly created pocket between the facial layers of the scrotum. The encysted hydrocele. In case of encysted hydrocele, the inguinal heniotomy plus incision and drainage of the encysted hydrocele is done. So this is Jabalay's procedure in which the sac is averted and sutured. Coming to the complications of surgery, in any surgery, injury to the surrounding areas gives its complications. So here, there can be injury to vas deferens, injury to urethra, injury to testis or epididymis, reactionary hemorrhage which may cause hematocele again, infection that is the pyocele, sinuses formation between the layers of the scrotum and the recurrent hydrocele. When in case of dealing with hydrocele, you should remember this mind map. This is the history, the types, the diagnosis, the physical examination findings and the treatment options. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe for more such videos.